Um, I'm pretty casual, so I hope that doesn't offend any of your sensibilities. Um, I, uh, I would rather just have, instead of just standing up here lecturing, have more of a conversation. Um, so please, if you have comments, questions, please feel free to, to interject them. Um, I don't know whether that's what this is supposed to be, <laughs> whether this is supposed to be more of a lecture, but I'm not much of a lecturing person. So uh, again, I hope that doesn't offend your, your sensibilities. Uh, I remember the days back when I was sitting in your seats. Um, it, uh, the college, I, I was here for a little bit before I went to Westminster, so. Um, well, today we're going to talk <clears throat> about, uh, about entrepreneurship and management. Um, wh what is entrepreneurship? Let's, let's start there, make sure we're all on the same page. What is entrepreneurship? Idea, idea, idea people. Idea people, okay. They're the, they're the people that, that come up with, with ideas. What else? Is it, is it the sole ownership? Can be. There are different ways that you can, that you can own a company, right? Sole proprietorship, partnership, corporation, S corps, all that kind of stuff. Okay. Any other ideas? Being some right. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Business, uh, a specific business or a specific idea or product, whatever it may be. Okay, good. I've always, I just always thought um, that it's a mentality, entrepreneurship is a mentality. It's like a way of thinking that um, it's not limited a little bit outside the box. It definitely is, is a mentality. Um, entrepreneurship, the definition is the process of um, designing, launching, and running a business. Okay, so not just running, it's got to be launching, designing, well, I've, I put those in the wrong order, sorry. Designing, launching, and running the business. Okay, now there are different types of, of entrepreneurs. Um, there are employee entrepreneurs, right? People that, that work for a company, but they, but in essence, they, they treat it like it's their own business. That's how I tried to, to manage myself. When people say a self-starter, that's what they're talking about, right? Um, there are franchises, otherwise some, sometimes known as a turnkey operation. Uh, and then there are, uh, I think it was, uh, this lady over here said, uh, forging a new path, finding something that's not out there or there's not much of it, and figuring out how to, how to bring that to market, right? Um, I've had experience in, in both the turnkey and franchising, uh, as well as um, managing, I, I, I didn't come up with the idea, but uh, I managed it for a long time. Uh, a company that, where I worked with, uh, I call her Clank, so I'm, I'm sorry if, <laughs> I'll try and show my respect and, um, where I worked with Jen. Um, as you, as, whether you are working for a fr uh, an entrepreneur, or whether you are, um, the entrepreneur yourself, um, at first we'll, we'll talk about what, as the entrepreneur. And granted, I've had less experience with this aspect of it. Like I said, I'm, I'm not so much an idea guy as much as uh, a manager. Um, I'm pretty good at, at taking an idea and managing it, bringing it to, uh, making it successful, not so much coming up with the idea myself, okay? Um, why is entrepreneurship important to the economy? Why do we care about entrepreneurs? Anyone? Yeah. Because entrepreneurs uh, generally start small business, that's their 
the businesses they start are generally small businesses, and I think those account for like six to ten businesses. In yeah, the at least, mm -hmm. at least. Most of the most of the uh, uh, jobs create created are through small business. Okay, um, they're startups of, uh, in one degree or another. They may be a startup that's been going for several years. They may be a startup startup. Somebody just opened their doors. The point is, is that is that most of the of the jobs out there are not for the GMs or the GE or whatever. They're for startups, for you're working for an entrepreneur. Um, let's talk about entrepreneurial management. What, what do you need um, to consider to be um, an entrepreneurial manager? Okay. Okay. That falls under management style. That's that's an excellent one. Let's talk about management style. Well, first of all, why is management style? Why is it important to understand your management style as an entrepreneur? Why do you think that would be important? Any thoughts? Any ideas? Right, right. Eventually, hopefully, you're going to grow, right? And it won't just be you packing boxes of soap or whatever, right? You're going to need to hire new people. So you need to understand your style. Has, have any of you guys ever worked for somebody that had a totally different philosophy or style, whether it's management style or, or just lifestyle from you? I think we all probably have, right? <clears throat> that, makes, that can make life really miserable. You spend a lot of time at work. And if, if you don't agree with the management style of the owner, for example, of a, of a company, it can make things really miserable. And it can create a lot of friction with work, not just like personal friction, but just friction overall. Right? So it's important to under, for you as the entrepreneur to know and understand your management style. Okay? We talked about one, say it again. Um, like not micromanaging so you can allow for more creative input. Okay, not micromanaging. Okay. Um, the ability to, to receive input from the people around you. Okay. What else? What are the other, some other ways that, that, that people manage that would be important to know? Accountability. Accountability. Okay, holding people accountable. Do you need to, to be the person that's always in charge? Some do, and there's nothing wrong with that, but you need to understand if that's you, if you're able to delegate, or if, you're, if you need to always be in charge of everything, right? And that goes for, for uh, corporate management as well as entrepreneurial management. But it's, it's more important in an entrepreneurial setting to, to understand that because you don't have as many managers typically to blame it on. Well, it was Jen's problem, not mine. I, sorry, guys. I, um, okay, so, so do you always need to be in charge or are you able to delegate? Um, a thought just popped into my head, and I'm sorry if, I, if it feels like I'm jumping all over, but um, be careful with delegation as an entrepreneur. Okay, why? Why do you think that you would need to be 
careful with delegation. I'm not saying don't do it. I'm saying be careful with it. Um, for one, the quality. Um, the person you're delegating to may not understand the quality or the way that you want it done, or may not fulfill it right. the same way. Or for a, a moving company, um, the two owners had just started delegating some of the things, and one of the guys that they delegated um, was to repair the damages, and it took him a month and a half to get one repair done from one move. Okay. Bless you. Right. Right. So, in essence, I think if I can shorten what you're saying, is you want to make sure that the person that you're delegating to, A, understands what you're trying to get them to do, B, or two, or I don't know, did I count or did I use the alphabet? Uh, B, that they not only understand it, but that they have the same. Uh, drive for excellence that you have, okay? That that they understand the timeline, that they understand, um, you know, what what it is that if, if the priorities, I guess, is maybe the best way to say it. I have this moving truck that needs to be repaired, or a piano, or you know, so I'm a programmer and I need to program this. But if this comes in, is that more important than this, than what I was doing before, right? So be careful with delegation. The other important thing about delegation is that you need to be very clear with your expectations, okay? And give a lot of feedback on what, on how that person's doing. Okay, if, if, uh, if you're bugged about the football game last night and you let that come over into, into work, you're not going to have people work for you for very long if, if they don't understand that, right? You need to be clear about your, your expectations. You need to be clear about following up. Um, and you need to, uh, to be... Uh, able to express those things in a, in a clear way, okay? Um, my personal opinion is, um, as we talk about ways that, that we can, um, that, that we manage uh, entrepreneurial relationships, as the entrepreneur, you need to be change-oriented and you need to hire people that are change-oriented. What does that mean? What does it mean, excuse me, to be change-oriented? Is there a tissue? No? That's okay. Yeah. Uh, okay, so we just had our company um, change. They got bought out. And when you have old people work there for years and the new company comes in, they want to change a lot of things. Okay. And that doesn't you know, go very well. 10, 20 years until they leave. Okay. So as you grow, um, I don't see any pens, but uh, as you grow, there are going to be changes, right? Obviously. It, obviously, if you get sold. Okay. Um, what about as the market evolves? If you're stuck doing this, but the market calls for this, say a new, uh, as, as Jen mentioned, I uh, most recently have, have worked both with nonprofits as well as with um, the, uh, the third party lead generation industry, okay, for, for education. Very highly regulated. So what happens if you are so stuck doing one thing and the government comes in and says, you need to do this? Okay, you're going you're gonna to have a really hard time 
making those changes if you're not change oriented. Yes? Wasn't that kind of what happened with Kmart and Walmart? Mm -hmm. Kmart just kind of stayed doing things the same way because yep. they were comfortable and it was working at the time. Yeah. Walmart came in and really worked. <clears throat> Think about that. Think about how long has Kmart been around? Very long. Kmart. Kmart, they were having blue light specials when I was two. I don't know what year they were founded, but I'm old. They've been around a long time. And they're part of an even older corporation, right? Sears. Sears helped settle the West. Sears and Kmart have had a really hard time competing with Walmart. Now, neither one of those three companies are startups, okay, so we don't have necessarily the entrepreneurial side of things to worry about at this point, at one point they, they were, but we do, they do have to worry about a changing market. They have to be change oriented. That doesn't mean they change things every couple of weeks, unless they need to be changed, but you can't be afraid of change. Okay? You have to be able to, to roll with, with the market, whether it's governmental regulations, whether it's just a better way of doing business, or whether it's, it's uh, a change to your competition. Walmart comes in, suddenly it's, they find a better way to do it. You know what? I want to do it that way too because I want to be successful as a company. Okay? Good, that, that was good, uh, a good thought. Um, so be change oriented. We've kind of talked a little bit about this one. Understand the regulations, governmental regulations. Uh, in education, in call centers, there's something called the TCPA, we won't get into that. But you have to, you have to really understand that kind of stuff. In the moving industry, there's probably, I don't know, E&O insurance. There's probably, I know there is for like accountants and stuff, but you know, if you damage somebody's piano, what happens? You know, you need to, is it regulated? Is it just a good idea? You need to understand all aspects of, of how, uh, whether it's a, a government regulation, an industry regulation, etc., how that affects you and your company and your product. Okay. Um, what else do we need to worry about as far as um, managing an entrepreneurial relationship? Well, I think communication. Okay, communication. Mm -hmm. Just like you kind of mentioned before with like setting expectations so people kind of understand, you know, what it is that you, what it is you want from them, what like, what it is you're working towards. Mm -hmm. I think that it's more important in an entrepreneurial setting, in a startup setting, um, for, for people to be on the same page, be going towards the same goals than it is in a corporate setting. Why do you think that might be true? Or do you think I'm just up in the night? Because in a corporate, they already have their foundation principles of what the company is built on. Mm -hmm. so there's not as much leeway in that as there is in an entrepreneurship because it can go very quickly in a different direction. Right. That's, that's a very good reason. Any other ideas? Yep, good. Any other ideas? Those are, those are both great, great comments. Um, in addition to those, 
Um, in, a, in a corporation, there are more, more chiefs. I don't want to be uh, politically incorrect, but, but you know the saying, too many chiefs, not enough Indians, right? Well, that's how it is in a corporation. Maybe not too many, or too many chefs, maybe is a better way to put that. Okay? Too many, too many people telling people what to do. That can be a bad thing. It can also be a good thing. It can, it can give you an opportunity as a manager to bounce ideas off of each other. You know, what do you think about this? What do you think about that? As opposed to an entrepreneur, who can he or she bounce ideas off of? Uh, probably nobody if it's a startup, right? So it's important, <coughs> excuse me, going back to our, our previous comment, it's very important for us to hire the right people. Very important that, that we all have the same goals, the same uh, work style or similar, okay? If I always have to be in, in, involved in everything, in all decisions, I need, that's not a bad thing, I just need to know. Because if I hire this gentleman here and he likes his autonomy, he likes to work independently, he and I are not going to get along very well, right? So we need to make sure, or I need to make sure that I understand what I need in an employee. Not just necessarily the most qualified, although obviously you're looking for the most qualified, but you're also looking for personality, um, work ethic, et cetera, okay? Um, I always looked for people that kind of fill, and this is just me, not everybody's this way, I am very aware of, of some of my shortcomings as manager. I look for people that can fill in those missing pieces. If people take me serious, all that think I'm serious all the time, they're scared of me, even though I'm not mad at them, whatever, then I want somebody that's more touchy-feely, that can, you know, hey, can you go tell this person blah, 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 so that I don't scare them to death, right? They don't think that they're going to get fired just because I said it. Um, again, it's understanding that, that managerial style. Um, and what, what you need. What, what else? What else is there? There's communication. What other aspects of, of managing an entrepreneurship, uh, I'm sorry, a startup is there? I think self-awareness is important just for all of these reasons. Mm -hmm. I agree. I agree. And a lot of these can move from entrepreneurship to the corporate setting as well. What makes a good manager in the corporate setting often is the same thing that makes a good manager in an entrepreneurial setting. The difference is that it's more crucial in an entrepreneurial setting. It's really the only difference. Okay. What else? What else is there? Yeah. important to know their strengths and weaknesses as well what they're good at. I mean we can guess um, we can like have them take an assessment or whatever online mm -hmm. um, for strengths and weaknesses but I think it, that's super important for them to know what their strengths and weaknesses are what yours are so you can collaborate better yep and then even make sure like for the hiring process to make sure that they're the right fit yeah, exactly. Exactly. Okay, any other thoughts? Yes? I think it's important to know what kind of structure you want as well. The, um, okay, we'll call it the corporate structure, but the business structure. But to the business itself. Right, yeah. Um, if, you, if you're getting a startup and you want a ton of innovative thinkers that brainstorm with each other, then you're looking for more of a team. 
working environment and you want to start out that way. Mm -hmm. And if you're wanting to kind of keep things at a certain standard and have things a little more um, <coughs> regulated, I guess, self-regulated, mm -hmm. then you, you want to have a little more structure in who you're hiring and what positions you're putting them in. Okay, good. The other aspect of that is how much hierarchy are you going to have? Again, am I, do I need to be involved in everything? Or am I comfortable bringing other people into the decision-making process? You don't want too much management. Otherwise, things get bogged down. A lot of bureaucracy. Okay? But you don't want to be doing every single thing yourself because then you'll stagnate. If you can't delegate anything, the company will stagnate, it won't really go anywhere. Okay? So you want to you wanna understand, like she said, what is your business structure? What is your management structure? Do I need a vice president of this? Do I need a vice president of that? Is a supervisor okay? Etc. Okay? So understanding that, that management style, that management structure, and what you need, okay? Don't hire somebody just to hire them. Have a, have a place for them and an idea of what that, it may evolve over time, their job. You may find that you only need them part-time. You may find that you need two people to do that job, okay? But you need to always hire with that that business structure and that managerial structure in mind. Okay. Any other ideas? Can you tell us some of the things you did to focus on employee motivation and why that's important? Okay, that's one of my points is, is hiring and maintaining uh, a good workforce. Okay. Why do you think that it's important to, uh, to be worried about We've talked about hiring the right people and, and some ideas as to how to do that, right? Why do you think it's important to retain, to focus on retention? Otherwise, you're spending money constantly training new people. Okay. But it also, if you're, there could be other issues, like if you're firing them, then they have unemployment insurance. And mm -hmm. your, uninsur your unemployment insurance goes up. Okay, yeah? Okay. Any other ideas? Happy employees are also much, much more productive. Okay. Um, I mean, it's so much easier, not not to mention lost opportunity costs uh, of of losing employees that know how to do the job and having to bring somebody in that doesn't. You know, if you're manufacturing, I don't know, combs, I don't need one, but um, some people do. <laughs> okay, if you're manufacturing a comb or a hairbrush or something, how, how hard is it to stick the teeth in? I don't know, I've never made one. Okay, so I could probably learn, but somebody would have to teach me. If, if you continually have somebody so much turnover in the tooth inputting <laughs> department, okay, you're not going to make as many combs or as many hairbrushes or as many whatever. Okay? So how can we, how can we uh, retain our employees? First, we have to hire the right employees. Next, we have to retain them. Okay, we'll skip over the, the, the obvious, that they're the right person for your personality and for the job. Okay? Um, but let's talk about some, some uh, employee retention um, ideas. What, what can we do? Opportunities for growth. 
Okay, opportunities for growth. Although I'll be honest with you, there typically aren't that many opportunities for growth in a small business. Okay, somebody has to die. <laughs> or maybe more responsibilities. Okay, more responsibilities. Yes. Okay. Okay. Go into more detail about that. What kind of recognition? What What do you mean? Like a reward for the for good performance. Okay. Sincere interest in who they are, their family, knowing their name, the deep look. Okay. In a small startup, or like in a startup, it's probably not as big of a deal. But mm -hmm. uh, I think it's a bigger deal. In a so small startup. To oh, okay. <coughs> Another thing is the, um, the ownership. So that they will feel like they own the business too. And mm -hmm. They will get more involved. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Okay. Um, yes. Kind of, um, I feel like if you um, if you're starting like a new company, uh, you listen to like your employee's idea to how to make um, the company better. Because you can, like as an owner, you can't like figure everything out yourself. So if you have some people working for you, be like, oh, I, I can I find a new way to make it like, work better and faster. Like and make them like, and then you take their idea, then like, yeah, good job, and you can, and then you let them know. Now they like feel like oh like I'm like uh like this is my company now too because I put like these ideas in and they're like using it. Mm-hmm. It's kind of like that emotional. Exactly. Thing. There's a lot of pride in that. Yeah. 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 I agree with all those things. In fact, that's one of the things uh, that, or many of those things, are what we did. Um, and it was a call center. Or majority of it was call center. There were other things that we did, but. Um, the average call center uh, has about 50 to 60 percent turnover. Okay, their their theory is to <coughs> excuse me to hire people, find out if they work, and get rid of them. They don't do a lot of training. They don't do a lot of uh, of uh, rewarding of of any of that kind of stuff. Okay. Our turnover was 6% at one time, okay? Now, as, we, as the business changed, that went up, <clears throat> but we focused on retention heavily, okay? And we did a lot of those things. We had weekly contests where I would give away hundreds of dollars every week in gift cards, okay? Uh, recognition. The Christmas party, we would give away a really nice prize. I happened to win it one, one year. Um, what did you win? And I went to Vegas for, uh, for a week. Okay, we didn't give that to everybody, but, but uh, you know, we would have weekly or monthly contests a lot um, where we would give away TVs, um, computers, jazz tickets, etc., etc. But one thing that I found is that people aren't, people aren't really that motivated by money. I mean, obviously you want money, you want more money, you want money enough to pay your bills, have a place to live, food on the table. But money as a reward, as an incentive, the, the, the uh, the motivation factor l disappears very quickly. They start, to expect it. they start to expect it. They don't really care, especially if you're paying them well, which we did. For a call center job, we had people making 22 bucks an hour. 
Okay, so people were paid well for that industry, <clears throat> but the rewards, the money, they didn't last. People, people expect it. People just, eh, it's not that big a deal. Okay, so we had to find other ways to motivate them. Um, recognition was a big, big one. I think it came from over here, one of you guys. Um, Okay, recognizing their, their accomplishments, having parties. Okay, you hit a, hit a milestone, you have a party. Even if it's something as inexpensive as pizza. Um, we had quality, uh, quality control parties. So people that would hit a certain quality level. In our, in our industry, that was very important. They had to say certain things. They couldn't say certain things. They had to, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, we would take them to Fleming's. Uh, I don't know if any of you guys that have ever been to Fleming's, but very expensive. We would spend thousands of dollars on dinner. Um, some more responsibility. Okay, although that's not always as easy as it sounds. You've got to have something for them to do. And you can't say, well, I pay this person $60,000 a year or whatever to do that, but I'm going to give it to you because, dang it, you did a really good job. I'm still paying this person. <laughs> I, can't, I can't do that a lot of times. But there are certain things that you might be able to do. Uh, what's that? Nerf Wars at noon. On Fridays, we, uh, we got automatic uh, Nerf guns, and we would have a, a little, uh, little war uh, on, the, on the call center floor. Didn't matter whether you were on the phone or not, you were fair game. Okay? Um, I don't know, what else did we do? We did. Yeah, we had uh, Christmas in July. Uh, one year, and then that we also had a hula or a a, a, a luau. There we go. Thanks. Um, and I, yeah, I dressed in a skirt and a coconut bra and a, and a mullet. I have my kids have this crazy '80s wig. I don't know where it came from, but it looks like. Uh, Looks like uh, Tina Turner and uh, I don't know somebody uh, maybe uh, not D Snyder. D. Snyder. <laughs> I was gonna say uh, Michael Bolton, but not quite that long, right? But you get the point. It's like this mullet, and it's like oh, um, yeah. Uh, one time we did uh, we did. Um, What's that uh, undercover boss? I mean, everybody knows me, right? Uh, I can't really go that undercover. But I, I dressed up different, put on a wig, pretended that I was just somebody that we had just hired. Anyway, the, the, it, it, the point is, is, that, is that it's very important beyond, and it's important that, that, you, that you give financial rewards. Because even though those don't last as a motivating factor, if people feel that, that you're helping their pocketbook, that you are you know, giving $10 in gas, which I bought so, much, so many Chevron gift cards that it was ridiculous. Um, buying them groceries, even $10. Okay? People appreciate that. And it motivates them. It's not a long-term motivation, but it, it motivates them. Gives them a little shot in the arm. But how many of you guys enjoy your, your jobs? Okay, think about why do you enjoy it? Is it just because you like programming? You like putting numbers in a book? Or is there more to it? We, we had very, very often, 
we had people that would leave um, and their comment was, because like most companies, uh, I did a, uh, we did a, uh, an exit interview. Their comment was, I won't really miss the job as a call center, right? I won't really miss being on the phones, but I will miss the, the environment, okay? They might not like me, I hope they did, but they might not, but they liked the environment that we created. Um, the other thing I think that, that is very important and motivational in a certain way, less, uh, but is treating people the way that you want to be treated. Um, you know, having a boss that treats you like his or her underling, uh, that's no fun. Um, but if they treat you with respect, they treat you with, with dignity, and they treat you like they want you to treat them, if they want to get me coffee, you know what, I'll get you coffee too. But if, if my boss isn't going to get me coffee, I'm not going to get him coffee either. Unless that's my job, I guess, <laughs> if I'm a barista. <laughs> But, but the point is, is, that, is that they treat you with respect. They treat you with, you know, and it becomes a good environment to work in. It's fun. You get rewarded. Not all companies can spend money on, on gift cards or contests. But every company can spend, can invest in having a great place to work. And it's really not that hard. Um, what else did we do? Anything else? I think the most effective was when you gave people a day off. Oh yeah. The contest, I forgot about day that. Off and you would do their job for yeah, them. I would spend the day on the phone, and they would get a paid day off. Plus, I got the commission from for being there. So I had to have a great day. Again, it was a call center, right? Um, that might not work if, uh, if you're an accountant. <laughs> the boss can't give you a day off and do the, do, keep the books for the day, send in the taxes or something. <laughs> that might not work so well. But you can think of, of different ways to do that. Yes? How many employees did you have? Uh, we, it kind of fluctuated depending on, on business, but uh, we had as many as 170 at one time. Um, on average, it was probably around 100, somewhere in, somewhere in that neighborhood. Some of them were home agents. Some of them worked at the office. Um, so, you know, we, we, uh, we really focused on retention. Um, and as a result, had people that had been there for five, six, seven years in a call center. So uh, that, that's highly unusual in a call center industry. Okay. Um, let's see, what time do I need to be done? Okay. Does that include questions? <laughs> Okay, so let's, uh, I, hope, I hope this has been useful. I hope it's been interesting. It's been more about management than entrepreneurship. Um, but like I said, I, I'm not an idea guy. Um, in our company, that was Chris, was his name. Um, but I, I was very good at, at finding the right people, keeping the right people, um, and growing the, growing the business, okay? Um, do you guys have any questions that we haven't answered? Anybody? Tell us how you found the right people. How did I find the right people? It, it was a lot of talking, a lot of interviewing. Um, and what I found is that over the years, um, it is gonna, different questions are going to be important to different companies. But I wanted to find 
if I were interviewing you, I want to find out who you are. Okay, because like I said, I wanted to make sure, A, that you could work in a call center, that, you know, if you've never had call center experience, that didn't, that didn't preclude you from, from being hired, but that, that meant that I needed to look into you and make sure you're the right person for that job. I also, I'm a hands-off person. Um, Jen can, can uh, attest to that. I'm not a micromanager. My belief is you teach people what to do, and the only time that they ever know you're there is either if you're having a good time, or, sorry about that, or if, uh, if they've made a mistake and you need to train them. Okay, now if I have to train somebody several times about the same thing, then there's a problem. But if I just have to, if they just made a mistake and I have to train them, that's no big deal. We all make, we all make mistakes. Um, so I would, sp I would spend time interviewing. Um, and, hang on just one sec, and, and looking for that, that right person. For our company, we needed people that knew how to be on the phones, that were friendly, that were intelligent, right? Because we were selling education. Somebody sounds like, you know, uh, I don't know, Slow Joe Crow or something like that. Uh, that dates me, I know, that reference, but... Um, then they, they can't sell education, right? Whether they've been to school or whether they haven't wasn't as important as do they sound intelligent. Um, it, I, don't, I don't know how to word this question, but um, during the hiring process, did you find that there was like a uh, competition between like your intuition and logic Sometimes, yeah. although learn, I learned to follow um, my intuition. Everything that needs to be said about a person, uh, whether they're working in a call center, a gas station, whether they're applying for CEO, I'm convinced that everything that needs to be said about a person can be found in their, in their resume. You just need to, to know the questions to ask to get that information out or to get clarification on that question, right? Their work history, are they somebody that finds a job and they're gone a month later? They're always looking for the next opportunity. I don't want that person, okay? Uh, that no hard feelings with them, I just don't want them. It's too hard to, to, to continually look for the right people. Um, you know, what what they think about their, their employer, what they think about, or their past employers, are they positive, are they negative? You know, all that stuff can be found uh, in their resume and in an interview. So I spent a lot of time interviewing people. Um, my one piece of advice for you guys on that, always be positive. Even if you hated, hated, your last company. You can always find a silver lining. Don't, don't lie, right? Don't tell them that, you know, Jen was, was the best boss I ever had if she wasn't. Okay, but you learned something from Jen. Figure out what that was and throw that in. You know, Jen and I really didn't get along that well. Um, for If you need a reason, then supply reason. But you know, I, I really learned a lot from, from Jen about, about responsibility, about hard work, something like that, right? Because if, if a boss thinks that you are negative about your last job, you think that they want a negative influence in their, in their company? So that's my piece of advice for you is is always be positive. Always find the positive out. Even if, even if uh, it's not nearly as important as you th make it sound, be positive. There's a silver lining. Um, and I'm sorry, I've, I ran out of time, but, but uh, hiring the right people, 
you know, I, I wanted to, uh, to find the people that, that matched me and my personality and my management style. And I think I did a pretty good job. And that, like I said, that was always in, in their resume and in the interview. Um, Jen was one of my favorite people in the whole world, honestly. Uh, I could always count on her. She always had thoughtful things to say. And I don't mean like, you look nice today. I mean, you know, I would ask her a question. It would, her response would be thoughtful. She, she didn't just say whatever she thought. She would think about it. So if she came to me with a problem, I knew it was serious. I knew that she had given some thought to it. Okay, if she said that, she, that, that I looked nice today, I knew she was lying. <laughs> um, anyway, I, I really appreciate the opportunity to come. Uh, you know, if you guys, uh, I'm on, on uh, LinkedIn. If any of you guys want to find me, you're welcome to. Um, but uh, I, I really appreciate the opportunity to come and talk to you. I, I hope that, that you weren't expecting a big lecture um, and that this wasn't disappointing for you. Uh, I, I had fun, and I, like I said, I'm not much of a lecturer, so. Um, if you have any questions that we didn't get a chance to answer, I'll be here for a few minutes after. Feel free to come up and, and let's talk, but uh, I don't know. That's it. <laughs>